Luther saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. You know that God will add his blessing to the reading of his word. This story that we find here in Luke's gospel here, in fact, it's recorded in three of the gospels. It's recorded in Matthew chapter 8, 23 to 27. It's recorded in Mark chapter 4, 36 to 40, uh, 61, or 41, and here in Luke's gospel, chapter 8. And it's a story about the storm at sea. When the storm came and the disciples were afraid, and they came to the Lord Jesus and woke him out of his sleep. And he stood in the boat and cried, Peace be still, and there was a great calm. When we examine the miracles that our Lord performed, we find that he performed miracles in relation to the human body. And he, was the, he performed miracles in relation to the natural world. The commentators believe that the greatest miracle he ever performed in relation to the human body was the rising of Lazarus from the dead. Remember how Lazarus died and Jesus carried him. After four days he came. When he came, Lazarus' sister said unto him, Lord, behold, he stayed four days already. Behold, he stinked. My his body was just integrating. It was breaking up because of the heat in that part of the world. And you remember how the Lord stood at the grave of Lazarus and cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, and the dead man arose. The commentators also say that they believe that the greatest miracle he performed in relation to the natural world was this one that we read here in Luke chapter 8, when he stilled the storm. Jesus stood up and cried, Peace be still, and there was a great calm, and there he manifested the fact of his deity that he was indeed God manifest in flesh, the one who had control of the very elements. And you know, friends, I want to talk to you this morning about this storm at sea, because in the past few weeks, uh, you know, we've had a few storms. We've had a storm that came up from the Americas, which was a hurricane in Syria. And remember how we were warned about it for days? And it came to the southern tip of Ireland, and my Lord, destruction had left in its path. And I know that you've got a bit of it here in the east coast, around Newcastle and Kilkeel and where the point my Five in Ireland, three people were killed. Thousands of people lost their electric. Rooms were blown off buildings, and there was so much destruction left by the storm. And you know, just as there are storms on land and sea, there are storms at times in our life. By the hymn writer said, when the storms of life are raging, tempest wild on sea and land, I will seek a place of refuge in the hollow of God's hands. And my own story, there's some lovely lessons for us to consider, and we want to apply these things to our lives this morning, because just as we drove down this morning, the sea is so calm and still. And peaceful, but it's not 
name of the name. The Lord was revealing to his disciples his plan and his purpose for them. And when the Lord has a plan and a purpose for your life, he will fulfill it. And of course he fulfilled his plan here because he brought them over to the other side in spite of the storm that came. We find that uh, he brought them over and just as God uh, has a purpose, he will fulfill that purpose. Remember Paul writing to the Romans and he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And the purpose that Paul is talking about there is the eternal purpose of God for every believer. And God's eternal purpose for you and I this morning is that eventually we will be likened unto His Son. We'll be conformed to the image of His Son. We will be like Christ. And no matter what we need in the way, my God will bring us safely over onto the other side. You see here, my, it says, and they launched forth. Let us go to the other side, and they launched forth. The Lord was directing these men into the center of his will. They knew where he wanted them to go. They knew what he wanted them to do. And my, when uh, they knew, they launched forth. They, they obeyed his will. By the Lord, leads us, it's a great thing when the Lord leads you to do something. He may lead us to pray. Maybe in the front meeting or maybe in a little time of prayer at home. He may, he may lead us to witness to someone that we, we work with. He may lead us to be involved in some ministry or he may lead us by to give something to some work. And you know, when the Lord leads you, we need to be submissive to his will. So we see here the leading of the Lord. And then it says in verse 23, and as they sealed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. So we see, first of all, the leading of the Lord, and now we see the suddenness of the storm. The suddenness of the storm. I'm told that the Sea of Galilee is approximately 13 miles long and approximately 8 miles wide. And it's not unusual for storms to come up suddenly, unexpectedly. The sea can be calm one moment and then in a few moments later, now it can be unrestful and, and the storm can come. These men were sailing along peaceably when out of the blue the storm came and disturbed their peace. And that's just like the uncertainty of life, friends, isn't it? We're sailing along on the, on the, on the sea of light, not a cloud in the sky, not a problem, not a difficulty, all's going well. And then out of nowhere, something happened. It only takes the phone to ring or a knock to come to the door or an appointment with the doctor or the results of a scan or news of some kind of other. And the situation changes completely and we're no longer by in the stillness and the calm of light for the storm, the storm come. You know, the Lord knew this storm was coming and he could have prevented the storm, but he permitted it. And he permitted the storm to teach his followers, to teach his disciples, some lessons. The Lord could prevent anything to happen to any of us, but sometimes he permits these things, he allows these things. By, by permitting the storm, he showed them how great he was. He revealed to them his great power. He showed them the one 
center of God's wrath. So it's either the leading of the Lord and the suddenness of the storm. And that can happen to any of us. The storm can come suddenly before my this evening service any of us could be in the midst of a storm. And then it says this in verse 24, And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And now we see the fear of the followers. The fear of the followers. You know, some of these men were experienced fishermen. They'd been out in the sea. They knew about the storm. My, but in spite of the efforts that they made in the boat, we found that the boat was filled with water, and they feared lest it would sink, uh, it would sink and we find that they came because of their concern, and they woke the master, and they said, Lord, Lord we perish, Curtis thou not, that we perish. And Jesus stands up, and he stills the storm with a few divine and five words, and then he says to these men, where is your faith? You know, he rebuked them for the lack of faith. I have to be honest with you this morning and say this, that if I had been in that boat, I would probably have done the same as they were. And I think that you would too. My dear friends, they were afraid. You see, they were fearful men. But you see, they had no need to wake him because the fact of the matter was this, that it was impossible for that boat to sink while the Lord was on board. The eternal Son of God, the Lord of glory, he was with them in the boat. He was with them in the boat. He was with them in this whole thing. Do you think that Christ could have drowned? Of course he couldn't have drowned. He was God manifest in flesh, not for a moment. And you see, friends, when you take the Lord on board, you'll never sin. The life that is Christ at its center will never sink. The church that takes Christ on board and makes him central to everything, my dear friends, it will never sink. There may be hard times, but it will never sink. You see, the leading of the Lord and the suddenness of the storm and the fear of the followers. And then we see the might of the master. Because it says here that he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. You know, the Lord had control over the very elements. We see Jesus here in the fullness of his, of his glory, in the fullness of his deity. And man with all his 21st century inventions has never been able to devise a means whereby he can control the wind or control the weather. We see here the might of the master. Mark's gospel, he renders it that he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and there was a great calm. And we see now the stillness of the sea. The stillness of the sea. This sea, this sea of Galilee, which a moment or two, my, the wind, the, the waves was high and raging, the storm was blowing, the storm was raging, and they were in jeopardy, they were in danger of going down as they thought. And here he is, and he stands, and he cries, Peace be still. And there was a great calm. It was just as big a calm or as blessed a calm as there is here this morning. You know, friends, when the Lord 
takes control of the storm, he can bring a calm instead of storm. And he brought them through this storm. And he brought peace into their life again. And calm into their being again. You know, in the three Gospels, we see the Lord calming the storm. No matter how good life is or how successful you are, there are storms of life that will come to all of us. We all have to go through the storm. I remember when I was just a young believer, not long saved, and learning about different things. And the pastor that I sat under, he he used to preach at times about the storm coming into people's lives and people going through the storm. And I was in my teens at this time, maybe my late teens, and I was sitting in the pew and saying to myself, you know, what's all these storms he's talking about? I have never been in any storm. I've never experienced any storm. What's all these storms he's talking about? I'll tell you this, friends, I know what they are now. Because we all have to go through them and we all experience them. So many different storms. You know, there are different kinds of storms and trials in life. The storm can be satanical. It can come from a satanical end. Remember Job? Job had 7,000 camels and 3,000 Job had 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses. Job was a successful businessman. And my, he was a loving father. He was a family man. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he was a godly man because it says that he feared God and escheweth evil. But you know, friends, one day the devil came against Job. The devil said to, Job, to God, Hast thou con, uh, considered your servant Job? If you take all these things away from him, he will curse you to your face. Job is only the man he is because of what you have given to him. Take these things away, and you'll find that Job will curse you. And so God permitted the devil, to send a storm into Job's life. And he lost the farm, and he lost the flocks, and he lost the family, and he lost his health. You see, it was a satanical. The storm came from a satanical storm. And you know, the storm can be physical. Sometimes sickness comes into our life, and it can be serious. Yes, even life-threatening. And it may come unexpectedly out of the blue. So the storm that comes, it may be satanical, or it may be physical, or it may be financial. Sometimes circumstances change. People are brought into unemployment. They have maybe a mortgage to pay. They have a family to keep. They have children to look after. There are so many different responsibilities. And here they are now, and they have no job. And the finances is not coming in for the bills to be paid. And you're in the storm. You're wondering what you're going to do next or how you're going to solve this problem. So the storm comes from many different angles. The storm can be satanical. My, the storm can be physical. The storm can be financial. Or the storm can be personal. Different things in our life. Bereavement brings the storm. Problem in the home. A wayward child. Sickness, or well, the storm can be can be spiritual. Maybe you know, and only you know, 
but you're not living as close to the Lord as you used to live. You've drifted apart. Or doubts or fears or attacks can come in. And these are only some of the storms that come, the storms of life, friend. But the lesson that we learn from this storm here that we're reading about this morning is this, that the Lord was in control. The Lord was in control. And when the storm is raging and at its worst, he's the master of every situation. He's the master of every situation. You know, it's hard to realize when you're in the storm that the Lord's in control. It's hard to realize that. Man, when your back's against the wall and the storm is raging, it's hard to, to believe then that the Lord's in control. It's all right knowing it before the storm. And it's all right rejoicing and praise the Lord, praising the Lord after it when the storm is over, when you can thank him for his goodness to you. But when you're in the storm, that's when your faith is really tested. That's when it's tested. One thinks of Joseph. My Joseph was a young man, about 17 years of age, and God gave to Joseph dreams. And God showed Joseph through these dreams that he had a plan for his life. And then, you know, Joseph's brethren came along and they became jealous because their father favored Joseph. And they took Joseph and they put him into the pit and they took his coat of many colors and they killed an animal and dipped the coat in the blood of the animal, took it to their father Jacob and said that Joseph had been killed. And you know, the Ishmaelites came and these men sold Joseph, their younger brother, to the Ishmaelites. And they brought him down into Egypt, and he's come now into the house of Potiphar. And he serves Potiphar and his wife, uh, and his wife in the home, until Potiphar's wife, my, she told lies on Joseph. And Joseph's put in prison now, and served 12 years in prison for a crime he wasn't guilty of. And I'm sure that Joseph wondered, because remember, at the end of the day, he was a human being at best, just like you and me. He was a human being, and he must have wondered about God's plan. And he must have wondered about God's promises that God had given to him. And here he is in prison now. But you know, when you read that story of Joseph, it says this time and time again, and the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph in the pit. The Lord was with Joseph in Potiphar's house. The Lord was with Joseph in the prison. And my God, my allowed Joseph to go through this storm but my, all the time, God in a sovereign purpose was bringing Joseph to the place where he needed to be and where he wanted him to be when the famine came upon Egypt. One thinks of Paul. The Lord called him to Macedonia, and the first thing happens to Paul when he obeys God's call and goes to Macedonia, he's through into prison. But the Lord was in control. Elijah stood for God against Ahab the king and Jezebel. And my, you remember how the Lord provided for Elijah down at the brook Cherith. And then one day the brook dried up. And Elijah must have wondered. But you know, friends, the Lord was in control. Because there was a wee woman down the road, a widow woman, and she had enough in a cruise of oil and a barrel of meal to provide for his need. My, whenever you're in the storm, no matter how fierce it may be or how dark the night may be, remember that this, that the Lord is in control just as he was in control in that boat in the Sea of Galilee. You know, when you look at this, 
We see these men in this boat. The Lord's presence was with them in the storm. All these men sailed across the lake, and the Lord was with them. He was in the boat. And as we sail through the sea of life, the Lord is with us in our boat. The Lord is with you in your boat this morning. No matter what storm it has to go through, or problem it has to face, or circumstance you find yourself in, the Lord is in your boat. The Lord's presence was with them in the storm. My, he'll be with you in the storm of sorrow to comfort you. He'll be with you in the storm of loneliness to strengthen you. Paul said, no man stood with me, nevertheless the Lord stood with me. He'll be with you in your time of need to provide for you. The Lord's presence was with them in the storm. And we look at this storm here. The Lord's power was available in the storm. Jesus manifest his mighty power in the storm. He took control of the whole situation, and the power of God is available today, this very morning, through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit that lives in you and lives in me. His power is available. My dear friends, power to shine in the storm, to shine in the storm. I remember when I was in Bali before I came here, got a knock at the door one night, and was a police, big fella, 18 years of age. Came around a corner too fast and hit a tree. And he was in eternity. No testimony. No time for God. But you see his mother, she shone for God in the storm. She shone for God. My dear friends, power to stand in the storm, power to stand in the storm. You know, I believe in these days, in our land and in our nation, we're in the midst of a storm. My immorality is rampant on the media in these days, whether it's the television, whether it's the newspapers, it's wall-to-wall -wall immorality. And there's time, this is a time for us to stand in the storm. We, so, we sometimes sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye, injure, the, ye soldiers of the Lord, well, now's the day to do it. My dear friend, these people are in our face morning, noon, and night. There's an organization now in the United States, and they want to write the Bible over again. They want to write, write the Bible over again. And you know why they want to write, write it over again? Because the Word of God today condemns everything they stand for. My dear friends, the Lord's presence was with them in the storm. The Lord's power was available to them in the storm. Power to shine, power to stand, power to serve. And the Lord's peace was experienced by them in the storm. He stilled the storm that had come into their life. He brought peace and calm to these men's lives that day when the storm was raging. And he can do the same for you and me today. He can do the same for you and me today. Dear brethren and sisters, maybe you're in a time of calm and peacefulness, and the sea is still. 
will not always be still. Not always be calm. We'll all get our turn. Nobody gets a free run. Nobody gets through life without going over the humps and bumps and the valleys that lie before us. Mr. and Mrs. Spafford were two fine Christians. He was a lawyer in Chicago in America. She was traveling with her four children on an ocean liner way back in 1847 when it hit another vessel, and both of them went down, and only a few people, my, were, were saved. Mrs. Spafford was saved, soldier founder, or a sailor founder, and the four children were lost. She landed back in Cardiff ten days later, some time after that, Moody and Sankey came. Mr. Spafford had wrote a little hymn, and he showed it to Sankey. And from that experience, he wrote these words, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. Dear friends, thank God that when the storm comes, the Lord will be with us in the storm, and he'll bring us through the storm over to the safety of the other side. May you know his presence and his power and his peace when the storm comes to you, whatever it may be. May God bless.